Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. The draft is coming soon. Uh, it'll be here before you know it, and we are going to dive into all of our players that we have on our big boards. And first guy is first guy on my big board, and I can't wait to get into it. You know the drill, Sammy. Start me up. Turn up your volume, your volume. because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Levis towards the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown. Wow. And it's the fourth TD pass of the day in the debut of Will Levis. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick. It's going to be sick. sick. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. I'm joined, as always, by my two counterparts, Jarrett and Vin. Uh, we are jumping right into our draft boards, and we're going to be going specifically into each player and diving deeper into what they could bring to this potential team, uh, where we might find them uh, in this draft, whether we move back, whatnot. Uh, we're going to talk in, talk about all these guys specifically. First one on our board is special guys, at least to me, in this year's draft. But before we get into that, uh, we're going to bring in our coveted draft specialist, Mr. John Vogel. John, how are you today, my friend? Gentlemen, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. I know your Eagles are uh, slowly getting back in the swing of things, right? Little by little. Fingers crossed, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, there's got some new pieces there that I don't think anybody saw were, were, were on the way. But we'll see how things shape up there down in uh, Vinny's country. But um, let's jump right into uh, our first player that we're going to discuss today. Uh, he is out of the uh, great college of Notre Dame, Mr. Joe Alt. He's my first guy that I'd like this team to attack in the first round. Obviously, there's different implications that may come about, whether that be trading back, uh, you know, so on and so forth. But, John, uh, I've been told by a lot of people that this guy is pretty much as NFL-ready as you're going to find at any position in this draft. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah. Um, first off, he's a really fun offensive tackle. Uh, he's a lot bigger than what you're used to seeing. He's a top-five player, you know, that's graded out for me at this point. Um, and I don't think that's that he's going to be overtaken. But if you want to, if you want to put a, a name, you know, to think about kind of the, the style of player that he is, the way that he kind of measured and tested who he who he's very close to, you know. So a comparison would be uh, Eric Fisher, who was the first overall pick by the Chiefs in 2013. He's you know he's very big, uh, maybe not as long. He's six eight with 34 inch arms. When we talk about arm length, we talk about length and you know the way that. Uh, that, that helps you when you're engaging with defensive linemen, getting that separation, kind of being able to keep them from engaging with you and controlling them, especially when you're in the block at six, eight, that's a little bit short, but it doesn't, it doesn't worry. It's not a, it's not a big deal uh, because there's still, he's still very long, um, good strength, pretty darn good athlete, especially for being, you know, six, eight, three twenty. Uh, was is uh, a three year starter at Notre Dame as well. So all those things kind of line up to the exact types of things that you're looking for in an offensive tackle prospect. So how do you see Joe, uh, Joe Wall in your rankings now for offensive tackle? I mean, we got a lot of guys out there. Could three three guys could go in the top twelve possibly. Um, how do you see Joe Wall measuring against those other? Top tier guys like Ola Guyton, Patrick Paul, the kid from uh, Oregon State. I can't pronounce his name, so go right ahead and, and Waga. say Waga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah for Waga. How, how do you? How does he like head over heels compared to the other guys? I think if you're looking for a guy that's a more of a technician, um, and you know he can get into a pass set, Joe Alter guy. Whereas you know Olu Fashano, he's kind of more of a, a powerful, you know, mauler. He can get into a pass set, but I think Alt's a little bit better of a pass protector than him. Now, for me, I, I had a, a Fashanu graded out higher than any prospect in the um, in the draft this year for me. He's my top graded prospect, and I love Fashanu, and I, I'd love to see him go to Arizona. I think he'd be a great fit for them there at four. But, you know, Alt is going to be more of that traditional – you know, big hulking left tackle that gets into a pass set really well. And I think, you know, that's what the Titans are going to need up, you know, this year. Um, he kind of fits. If you want to think about the 49ers, and I'm bringing up the 49ers because obviously Rand Carthen comes from San Francisco. He helped build those teams out there. They're, if you look at the way that they're building the Titans right now, it's a lot. It's very similar to what John Lynch did when he was building the 49ers. 
uh, with the types of players they're bringing in, with the you know the the styles that they are preferring. Uh, and I think you're going to see that type of an offense in in Tennessee this year. So, you know, when you think about the tackles that they took out there, you know, Mike McGlinchey was a guy that they drafted. Uh, you know, they spent a lot of money to go get Trent Williams. He's in this mold where he's going to be an athlete. He can get out into space and do things. But really, you put him in your pass set and you just let him get back there anchored down. He's going to hold up the left side extremely well. If Joe Alt is there hypothetically at seven, regardless of who goes um, in the first six picks, do you think if he is there, do you, what would you do at seven if if Alt was there available? And what do you think the Titans will do if he's there? I, I think they take him. You know, that's one of the positions they haven't addressed, and that's exactly what I would do. You know, and that's assuming that Fashan is off the board. And you know, when we talk about the left tackles in this draft class. There's just the two of them, right? That are, you know, head above, head above shoulders above everybody else, and that's Fashan and that's all. You know, when you start getting to some of these other tackles, you know, we're talking about guys that played on the right side, guys that have versatility to play across the board, like Graham Barton out of Duke, um, even like Jason Latham and Fuaga out of Oregon State. Those are guys that are projected to play other positions. They're not going to play left tackle, and the Titans haven't really addressed that up to this point. So I think that. They know they're they're walking into this draft and they're anticipating going and getting a guy to anchor down that left side, protect Will Levis this year, uh, because of the moves that they've already been making. And I think if you take Alt, you're still going to get a guy that's going to play, you know, to a second contract, very well possibly could play to a third, and do it at a very high level. Um, I think that that's great for them. I I would do that because anytime you can get a bookend left tackle, when you think you've got your quarterback situation figured out. And you need one, go do it. You know. So if Fashanu is there, though, to play devil's advocate, if Fashanu and Alt are there, do you still think the Titans prefer Alt? Yes. Or okay, fair yeah, enough. So, no further question. No, we could get into this a little bit because if you look at the tackles that the Titans have on the roster right now, uh, Andre Dillard, Dylan Radens, uh, Nicholas Dillard, Ron, yeah, yeah. So Jay, uh, Jalen Duncan, Nicholas Petit Ferrer. These are all guys that are big, have that arm length, 33 to 34 inch arms, and are relatively good athletes. They all had, you know, their their 10 yard splits right at about 1.75 seconds when they came out or less, uh, 5.15 in the 40 or less. Alt kind of fits that idea, right? And, and you know that a couple of these guys were brought in, you know, since Carthen's been there when he's started this cycle you know, of of bringing in his guys to the roster. Uh, when you look at I think that tells you right there off the get-go, yeah, you got an opportunity to bring in a guy that fits your measurables. He's got everything that, you know, you want in that tackle. He, It's not ta- – you know, teams draft based on um, – especially on the offensive line, they draft based on the measurables and – what they the the testing numbers that they like, right? They have certain thresholds that guys have to hit. Offensive line coaches love to work with similar coaching styles, right? So I think if they're both on the board, Fashana makes the most sense. Uh, and I think that was, you know, you can go to Cleveland because that's where, you know, Bill Callahan, your offensive line coach, was prior to that. That's also the type of tackle that they preferred out there. You know, especially on the left side, was a guy that was a little bit more agile that can move around. It's just part of the West Coast offense, you know, and that's exactly what Tennessee's bringing in is that McVay Shanahan style because that's where Zach Taylor came from, and that's who Brian Callahan worked under. You know, so, so I think that's a surprise uh, if they go with Fashanu over Alt at seven. I would be very surprised, yes, because Fashanu is going to be more of your traditional offense as opposed to that West Coast. Okay. So now you see you see a lot of these guys and these scouts and, and all these players now that because it's draft it's a month away you see all these people clipping you know videos of how Ola got um got got against Ohio State last year and yeah. then you have Joe Walt that mm-hmm. comes in there and he played you know very well against you know premium talent in this league now. I see, like, there's all rankings here. You have rankings. Other people have rankings. All, all these draft experts have rankings. Now, I see that Fawaga has jumped up the draft boards now, mm-hmm. and and 
possibly he could be the best left tackle. And he's getting a lot of, you know, uh, uh, heat right now that, uh, uh, you know, that he's, that he's climbing up the draft board. So do you see that, the, that he could be possibly the first tackle off the board versus Joe or, or, or Ola? No, personally, no. Um, the, the first thing with Fawaga is he's got a very strange body shape. And that sounds funny, right? Because but that's part of the process when you're looking at six, him at six, the combine. 340. Oh, yeah, no, but I'm talking about when you actually look at his shape, right? He's built up top, and he's not really built in his lower half. And that's so he's light in the ass, huh? Right, exactly. Uh, that's not something you typically see in an offensive tackle. You know, they're usually guys that are built. They've got power there. He, yeah. So so you're, you're already coming into it thinking you're going to shape him a little bit. Now he has played left tackle before, I do believe, but he started the last couple of years at Oregon State at right tackle, and he's much more of a downhill run blocker. You know, so if I was the Miami Dolphins, yeah, I might think of, you know, Fuaga as an ideal left tackle because my quarterback's left-handed and his blind side would be the right tackle. You know, so I'm going to want somebody who's more of a pass protector on my right side as opposed to my left side. So, yeah, I would be shocked if Fuaga came off the board before Alt or um, Fashana just because he's a little bit more of a project in the passing game than both of those guys. Yeah. Uh, listen, it, it, it's a position of need. It's going to be a position of need in the first round, second round, and beyond. We desperately need a left tackle. Obviously, this uh, this news that we'll get into later on uh, last night for our secondary, that's going to help us with our sh with shaping our draft board. But you know, all it's gonna all it's gonna be a guy that I'm, I'm definitely gonna want. I'm gonna continue to want. I think it's a good fit, and we'll have to see how it shapes up. But uh, someone's gonna be there at the tackle position. We're gonna be getting into some other folks uh, momentarily, but that'll wrap up our uh, discussion on Joe Walt and how he could potentially fit in with this Titans offense. And uh, we're gonna be moving on to uh, other players uh, momentarily. So that's gonna conclude Joe Walt. Sammy, you can send me out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Talking Titans, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.